November 11th in the year 2000. The eyes of the world were on Florida, wondering who's going to be the next president of the United States. But we have something much more interesting here to show you this morning. We're going to show you the what we call the Orcar project that uh, M Technology has been working on for Magplane and IMC Agrico. Let me show you what we have. These two trailers are where we've been doing our work here in Florida for the past two years. Let me put this stuff down and I'll give you a brief overview of the project. What this project is all about is moving very large quantities of phosphate rock, three million tons a year, from point to point within the IMC mine or perhaps from the mine to the port of Tampa. This uh, prototype car that I'm standing in front of has a cylindrical hopper here. It will hold uh, hundreds of pounds of phosphate rock. On the bottom of the car are a number of permanent magnets, and those magnets interact with these windings that you see on this 24-inch diameter pipe, and together they make what we call a linear synchronous motor. We can use that linear motor to move the car along the pipe at speeds approaching 40 miles an hour. What I'll do now is position the car so that you get a good view of it taking off, and we'll let it run for a little while. Then we'll stop it again, and I'll tell you some more details about how this system works. First, I'm going to push it here so you get a good view of it moving forward. It'll take me just a minute to go and turn on all the systems inside, and then we'll show you the car starting up. running the car at about 15 miles an hour. The system's completely automatic, as you can see. We're at the bottom of a hill here. There's a hill at each end of the uh, pipe that you see. The hill at this end has a station that can load the car. unload the car, and the hill up at this end goes up quite a bit higher so that we can run the car and test its high speed performance. So it just rolls up the hill, the motors take over, rolls up that hill, rolls up that hill, rolls to a stop, comes back down and the whole performance repeats itself. I'm going to go inside and stop the car, and then I'll tell you some more details about the system.
Hey, I've turned off and locked out all the motor drive so that it's safe for me to approach the car and the pipe here. You notice how what a smooth controlled stop it came to. That's part of this system. We can uh, control the position of the car with an accuracy of about four inches. Uh, it's repeatable much better than that, but I can only give you four inches, four inches, four inches. At any rate, here is the car. I'm going to go through some of the details on it. The car has six wheels on each end. Uh, the wheels are standard uh, steel wheels with a uh, polyurethane tire on them. They're made for, made for mining use, and uh, we've been very pleased with them. They work very well. Uh, the first set of wheels that we tested in our lab melted in less than two minutes when we ran them at 40 miles an hour. Uh, these, we gave up trying to destroy them. They, uh, we could run them, uh, I think we ran 400 hours at 40 miles an hour yeah, with no discernible wear whatsoever. So we, we selected them for our car. The car itself is uh, very simple. It's just uh, two end plates that hold the wheels, one here and one here, and a big steel bar in the middle that holds a hopper. And what I'll do now is I'm going to turn the hopper over. You can see here the hopper holds uh, quite a few cubic feet of rock. I think uh, filling it halfway up corresponds to about uh, four to five hundred pounds of phosphate rock, which uh, looks something like this. What I'm going to do now is turn the magnet around so that you can see it. Hopefully this won't erase the videotape. That is the magnet. What you're seeing is a covering of stainless steel sitting over the tops of the permanent magnets which are right here. They're very strong magnets. They're made of rare earths. Uh, this is a relatively new permanent magnet technology. It gives us a much more powerful magnetic field than we could ever have gotten before with the uh, old permanent magnets. Uh, these give us a field of about uh, one quarter of a Tesla at our winding, which is where the thrust of the motor is developed. I'm going to lower this down now. The pipe that the car sits in, we've cut it away here, but this is a standard wastewater pipe. It's made by Hobas. Uh, it's got a 24 inch inside diameter. It's a composite pipe. It's, uh, the inside is a epoxy glass uh, structure and then there's an epoxy filled concrete composite on the outside. It's uh, very strong, relatively light, and relatively cheap for a pipe uh, this diameter. The windings are next. The windings are made out of what's called a direct burial cable. It's just uh, an ordinary wire that's uh, got a very strong insulation on it so that it will withstand ultraviolet light from the sun rain and so forth, it's perfectly legal to take this cable and bury it directly in the ground and that's frequently done. We chose this cable because we knew for a mining application that the motors would be subjected to quite a bit of wear and tear and we wanted to have them have a good long life. One of the other things we did that's hard to see from your vantage point in the video is the winding of this motor is done in a, a somewhat complicated way. Uh, but the complication is offset by the advantage that there are no joints in our windings. There's about 3,000 feet of wire in here wound in three continuous pieces. There's three, it's a three-phase motor. There are no joints at all. Had we used the simpler winding, we would have had over 200 joints on every single motor and sitting out here in the Florida sun and rain, I'm not sure that that would have been a very good idea. Now let's talk about the system as a whole. If you look up this way, you see
the product that we're moving with the uh, ore car project here is phosphate rock. It looks like this. And uh, here at the mine, they move several million tons of this every year. And uh, it costs them too much to haul it around. The reason for this project is to reduce the cost of moving this material. So maybe it would make more sense. I could. Inside the trailer now, where we uh, supply the power to the motors for the uh, ore car system, also where we control its speed and direction and so forth. I'm sitting in front of the computer screen, which is where we do all the controls. Uh, basically, the screen we have here is a development screen. It's uh, not intended for uh, mine operators. This is for us engineers to be able to tune up each motor and examine their performance and attempt to make the system work uh, more reliably and faster and so forth. Uh, this screen shows the status of each motor, how much current we put through it, how much speed uh, the car gained as it went through the motor, and so forth and so on. It's kind of hard to see this screen uh, on a video quarter, so uh, rather than show you that, I'm going to show you the rest of the hardware in the system. The actual control of the ore car is done with this uh, device here. This is an Allen Bradley SLC5 programmable logic controller. It's basically a, a same as a PC. It's a small computer, but it has very good input and output capabilities. It can control switches and relays, measure voltages and currents, temperatures, things like that. So the connection is from the computer to this system. We could actually turn the PC off and the ore car would keep running because this box is the one that does all the controls. Down here is where the connections then go to all of the Robocon drives. These are the Robocon drives. I'll open one up for you in a minute. They're running right now. These are uh, more or less standard 100 horsepower current source inverter drives. We have modified them for use on the Robocon. On motor drives that actually put the current in the motors that force the car back and forth through the pipes. These started their life as standard induction motor drives and then at M-Technology we designed new control circuits so that they would be able to control the linear synchronous motor that we use in the ore car. You can hear each one buzzing as the car goes by. You can also hear a thunking as the car goes by. We're actually, for reasons of economy on this prototype setup, have one drive running every two motors. So after it passes through a motor, you'll hear the relays thunk. You hear that thunking noise, that's just it connecting to the other motor. So this one runs motors five and 10, this one runs motors four and nine, and so forth. I'm gonna go shut the system down now, and then we'll open up these cabinets after we've turned the power off so you can see what's inside one. This is the Robocon drive that I told you about. And here's what it looks like inside. We have uh, 480 volt power that comes in through the circuit breaker here. And it's then rectified to DC with the SCRs here. It passes through a very large inductor that you can see the DC current passes through a big inductor that you can see down here. And that keeps the current, the DC current fairly constant even though we're switching it from one coil to the next. And then finally it goes to this assembly here which is the inverter assembly and that's what actually puts the variable frequency, variable phase current out to the motors that we need to make them run. Now this drive originally was designed to run induction motors. We modified it at M Technology. Specifically, we designed this card. Uh, we made some minor modifications to the rest of the drive, but this card is the main thing. This card takes two sensor inputs, one from the front of the motor and one from the back. These are simple magnetic sensors and command signals from the PLC that I showed earlier. And the card looks like so. This is the card, it's a digital uh, circuit. Here missing are two uh, read-only memories and we program, it, program into those memories a specific profile that, that uh, tells this card for a given speed of the car how fast you can accelerate. 
this is a very flexible system that allows us to compensate for losses that change as the car goes faster or slower. This card has been through uh, two or three revisions, not surprising on a development system, but uh, is working very well right now and we're quite pleased with the results. Turning on the system is fairly easy. After I've turned on power to all the drives, I apply a reset from the computer just to make everything sure everything's starting from a safe place. Now I have to enable each drive. I'm going to load the starting sequence into the computer and start the drives up. the drives, if you want to look out the window, out the door I should say, you'll see the, the car moving uh, in motor number three. Here we go.